In the last video, we talked about precedence rules in Scala and how they work with the symbolic names. There are two other aspects of the symbolic names and generally in fixed notation that need to be considered. Those are associativity and then how we get things that aren't in fix. And so associativity deals with whether things bind left, right, or right, left. So two plus three plus four, or how about we do two minus three minus four, because this is non-commutative. So the order matters here. It is important that this is actually two minus three and then minus four, because the operators happen from left to right. So this is left associative. Scala has will make everything left associative with one exception. And of course, when you convert these left associative to uh, method calls, you get something that looks like this. And then that value dotted with that. Uh, note that compiles. It's a good thing we don't have to type that in because that's really ugly. <clears throat> You can also make things right associative, and any operator that ends in a colon is right associative. We've seen this before when we have done consing to lists. <clears throat> Cons is not a method on int. Cons is a method on a list. Nil is a list. So it turns out this expression here is actually binding from right to left, because it is right associative because the operator ends in a colon. So that's what we're actually getting here. It could also be written as dot cons of three and then that expression dot cons of two and then that expression dot cons one. These two things do do the same thing. So you can make your own methods, if you have methods that you want to have be right associative, they should end in a colon. Anything that ends in a colon, once again, will wind up being right associative when it's used in infix notation. There are actually some operators that are not infix. You don't want them to be infix. If I have some variable a, a equals 42, and then I say minus a. Uh, so if I had said minus 5, you might just say, oh, well, that's just a negative number. But minus a isn't a negative number, and it will wind up evaluating to a negative number. But this is some operator that's being applied to the value that's stored in a that gives you the negation of it. I'd like to be able to do that because my 2D vector could be inverted. I should be able to get like the inverse of my v1. I should be able to flip it around in direction, which is the same. All that does is it flips the x and the y values to create the negations of them. How do we do that? Well, this is a special rule in Scala that if you start a method with unary and then underscore. Now, remember, this is actually a generally allowed name. It's just the interpretation that's special. So unary underscore and then one of the operators that can be used as a unary operator. The operators that can be used as unary operators are the minus, the exclamation point, and the tilde, which is one of these other special characters, uh, which actually I seem to be missing from this list. Tilde is also allowed for symbolic operators, and uh, it can also be used as a prefix operator. And so it just goes in front of a value. So if I want if I define a method called unary minus, I can use it to invert one of my vectors. Okay. So turns out this doesn't really make sense for the um, for the mutable vector, and the reason it doesn't make sense is because I don't want no one is expecting minus v1 to actually change the value of v1. So I really don't want to define the unary here and have it do a mutation. That would be very confusing to people. But for the immutable version, it makes perfect sense to have this. And then I can say something like 
like that, and that just will make v4 equal to the negation of, of v1. So the values will, or the vector will point in the opposite direction. 